All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Weird times we are living in on the heels of the aftershocks of what we just witnessed in yesterday's show, in which we were discussing a full-on celebration of the same-sex marriage law at Mar-a-Lago. Many people are still in shock. I'd be interesting, interested to hear what you guys are hearing about this on the other side in terms of from his supporters, how they are trying to justify this. Now, a few of you have told me that people are saying if we're real Christians that we would love everybody and they're trying to blow past it in that way. Or they say that he is working for the Most High. Well, anybody that I know that's working for the Most High would never, ever endorse that. So, a lot of people in shock. Unfortunately, the fear of the left losing will still cause people to support Trump. And we're going to get into some brand new findings today that you have not heard yet on this channel. I decided to look at more vintage videos of the Trump Tower opening in 1983 and later to see what other occult clues that I could find within those videos. We, if you haven't figured it out by now, the MAGA magician is Trump. He likes to seed in these occult symbols into his presidency and beyond in everything that he tweets and builds is full of occult symbolism. Now I found this particular gem from the 1980s, 1983, the year that Trump Tower opened. And in this you will see Ivana Trump giving Bob Vila of this old house a tour of Trump Tower. Now what makes this weird is what you're going to hear next. Work. Incredible lacquer work, yeah. yeah. Looks like everything in here is custom designed for this room. Yeah, it was done by the Michael DeSantis, the New York designer. Who is Michael DeSantis? And is he related to Ron DeSantis? Now, I don't think he is. There's a lot of DeSantis out there. But, wow, right? Now, apparently, this guy died in 1999 on 923 which is a peculiar date. Here's Ron DeSantis. Again, they may or may not be related, but I decided to do a side-by-side -side just in case to see if you guys could find anything. Now, I put the word out yesterday on yesterday's show, and many of you said they were prob everything was done on probably not related. Um, but you did find that this Michael DeSantis had mob ties. So... That is something to note. Now, we do know that there were many mob ties associated with the building of Trump Tower. It wasn't just the interior design. It was also the concrete used, which was way overpriced for its time. Nobody was building concrete high-rises during this time. So he made some kind of a deal with the mob because they were the only ones who could supply concrete during that time period. And they built Trump Tower. Now, let's keep watching here. And listening to what Ivana has to say. And everything was done on the paper, custom designed to fit this room. Earlier we looked at an unfinished bathroom. Yeah. I but the acceptance generally of the public. Now, here you're going to hear Trump himself talking. And what I noticed was the two T's, these T sculptures in the lobby here that you can see from the outside tt now of course that stands for trump tower but we also know that alphanumerically t is 20. t is 2020 so the year of the bat wasn't it public the numbers of people that have come in and used trump tower architectural community the we've gotten the greatest reviews given to a building in many many years so what let's break this down a little bit further because it isn't just about TT and 2020 and the year of the bat, which was the year of COVID, of course. They said it came from a bat. But he also built his building to look like a bat wing. 
2020, the year of the bat. Now, essentially Trump Tower was built as a monument to the future of events that hadn't happened yet. The 58 stories would become the 58 years after 1958 that he would win the 58th quadrennial presidential election. And the bat, the shape of the building, would infect the world, for which he would make a cure, which is exactly what Apollo does. Which, of course, is the decoration of his 66th floor penthouse. Now, don't get caught up in the number of floors because he did that intentionally. The building has both 66 and 58 floors. Now, the building next door is the IBM building, the Superman building. And everybody remembers that when he recovered from COVID, he said he felt like Superman. Now, what's up with this building? Now, we've gone over this building, but it's worth repeating as many times as we need to to get the word out. This building houses the Lotus arm of IBM computing. Well, Lotus in the 1990s did an ad campaign called I Am Superman in which they sang the song I Am Superman from R.E.M. Shortly afterwards, IBM's Lotus arm was purchased by China. So essentially you have China next door to Batman. Batman versus Superman. Now wrap your brain around that for a minute. This entire complex was built for the future. Now, of course, there are superhero trading cards that we we were already talking about Trump being a superhero. Everybody laughed. Not everybody, but the people on this channel know. But everybody else laughed. And, but lo and behold, a few days after that video, he announced himself he was a superhero. So, I decided to break this down a little bit further. Here's the new information on this channel. If this building and these pair of buildings encoded the future before it happened, are there any clues about the 47th president? And in fact, there are. There are only two basic floor plans in Trump Tower. This one has four steps. One, two, three, four. And the other basic floor plan has seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Forty, seven. So the question is, will Trump become the 47th president? Now I want to be clear here as well. That the 58th quadrennial election is different than the 46th president that he became. Or 40, 45th, sorry. So I guess we'll have to see what happens, won't we? Now here's something else that I found. And this is weird. I took Trump's first two wives, Ivana and Marla Maples. And I plugged it into an anagram. And out of Ivana and Marla Maple's name, you can unscramble that to include his third wife's name, Melania. Not only Melania, but Melania, a snarl vamp. Since we're on the topic of vampires and bats, now you have to ask yourself, what kind of magic is this? Has Trump fulfilled some kind of prophecy? Maybe the white horse Apollyon of Revelation 6-2. What many people don't know is that it was from white horse Yukon brothels that the Trump family fortune originated. 
The Canadian Gold Rush White Horse And not only that he accepted or tried to pay off his legal fees with a horse don't know if the horse was white but he also has a white horse spa at Trump Dunes which of course is a throwback to the past from White Horse Yukon now he doesn't give us any room for interpretation at this point because this what you're looking at on your screen right here is one of the rare digital trading cards him on a white horse carrying the American flag he's essentially taken all of the guesswork out of it for us the only thing left at this point is your heart and the right left paradigm now flags are pieces of fabric and the word used in Revelation 6-2 the taxon means a bow or piece of fabric and there are way too many similarities between this image of Trump on the white horse and the 19th tarot card called the Trump card the Sun card XIX and remember his nanny is XI XI is her name ZZ essentially her name is 19 the baby on the tarot card is in front of a wall carrying a flag now I looked into this a little bit deeper apparently this flag is red it looks orange in the picture but it is red and it represents blood sacrifice blood of renewal while a smiling sun shines down on him representing accomplishment and of course we know that the flag has red in it now what else is going on in this matrix well apparently Trump is suing New York why because they opened up the statute of limitations for victims of abuse to come forward now is this some kind of move by the left strategic move well they want it to appear that way and it could be but they're playing a game here. This is out of Reuters. Trump will challenge a New York sex abuse law and writer's defamation lawsuit. Now why is he suing them? Well, because accusers under the law are coming forward. Let's read about what happened here. Trump plans to argue that a New York law allowing a writer to sue the former U.S. president over claims that he raped her decades ago is unconstitutional. Lawyers for Trump said in a filing made on Monday in Manhattan Federal Court that they would move to dismiss the lawsuit filed last month by E. Jean Carroll in part on grounds that the law spurred by the Me Too movement is invalid. Trump has denied Carroll's claims that he raped her in a dressing room 27 years ago. The former L magazine columnist is suing Trump for defamation and battery under the New York Adult Survivors Act. So he's saying this act is unconstitutional that allows victims to come forward outside of the statute of limitations. Wow. Now, enough about that. Let's switch gears here. I'm going to check in with you guys. We're going to get into some ancient archaeological finds today. Good, make sure we're connected up with you guys. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Now, apparently there's a new Indiana Jones film. And it's called The Dial of Destiny. Now, there is a trailer out. I took a look at the trailer. Didn't really see anything, per se. 
but the new film centers around a new artifact. Now, what is this Dial of Destiny? Well, they're saying it's based off of something real. And this particular Dial of Destiny has the ability to turn back time. Dial of Destiny, D-O-D. Let's read about this. Whenever Lucasfilm announces its intention to make a new Indiana Jones film, one question immediately jumps to mind. What mystical artifact of great power will Professor Jones be searching for next? While well, we finally have a title for the swashbuckling hero's fifth big screen adventure, we're no closer to, to learning what the Dial of Destiny actually is. Are we talking about a fabled dial-like device? capable of turning back the flow of time or is this actually a secret biopic about the founding of the dial soap company james mangold the first director to helm an indiana jones adventure outside of the legendary steven spielberg certainly isn't telling so there's a little bit of mystery here isn't there but here's what's going on with this film and here's the story that they're missing here that they're not telling us there is a nazi theme to the indiana jones and the dial of destiny let's read the plot here in 1969 indiana jones lives amongst the backdrop of the space race uh apollo artemis it's all happening right now Jones is uneasy over the fact that the U.S. government has recruited former Nazis to help beat the Soviet Union in the competition to make it to space. So, in other words, the plot line of this new Indiana Jones film will be that of Operation Paperclip or Project Paperclip. Nazis at NASA. The moon landing program, which is all happening right now. Now, of course, we will decode this film when it comes out. It's set to come out on June 30th. And this is appropriate, isn't it? Because we had already identified that a solar eclipse will occur. The first solar eclipse of 2023 will occur on Hitler's birthday, 420. So... Exciting times, you guys. Now, speaking of artifacts, there are a few major discoveries that took place this week. A cache of Egyptian canopic jars full of preserved organs. Now, what they don't show us is these actual jars. They show us everything else. But they don't show us the jars. I wonder if there was black goo inside, as we have speculated on previous shows. This is out of the Miami Herald. Discovery of 20 ancient Egyptian tombs reveal idols and vessels for preserved organs. Look at this skeleton they found. Let's zoom in on this. Look how creepy this is. Now... If this is a one foot ruler, this thing is massive. It's about eight to nine feet tall, if that's a ruler. I couldn't find that archaeological tool to measure anything out in the Google Images, but if that's a ruler, then this skeleton is nine feet tall. It's a giant. Now, let's keep looking here and read this story about this particular archaeological find. 20 ancient Egyptian tombs reveal idols and vessels for preserved organs. 20 ancient tombs filled with a variety of artifacts, including amulets and vessels for embalmed organs, were unearthed in Egypt. The cemetery was found along the Nile River Delta near the city of Damietta. According to a December 20th news release from the Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, the discovery will help researchers learn more about the history of the Mediterranean city. Tomb dates to the late period. 
the last era of native-born ancient Egyptian rulers, which lasted from 664, which just so happens to be how many feet tall Trump Tower is, to the conquest of Alexander the Great in 332 BC. Now what you're looking at here are scarab amulets, the scarab beetle. My personal belief is that all these presidents are basically reanimated Egyptian gods. They took the DNA from these canopic jars and they reanimated them. That's why Barak's name backwards spells scarab. B-A-R-A-C-S. Barak's scarab. And he looked like an Egyptian pharaoh. But not all pharaohs are dark complected. Look at this. Photos released by the government show at least four graves alongside each other with human skeletal remains inside. Some of the tombs were more elaborate, made from brick, while others were simple ditches, officials said. Series of amazing metallic foils, which covered the human remains and took the shape of several Egyptian deities, were found inside the graves. So they were covered in metallic foils. Other funerary ornaments of varying shapes and sizes were also disentombed, including a headrest and idols of Isis. So here are some of these artifacts here. Metallic foils. Really, really weird. Miniature canopic jars. Containers used to store embalmed organs, such as the intestines, were also discovered inside some of the graves. Archaeologists will continue excavating the site, but expect to unearth additional remains and relics below the layers of sand. Alright, so here's what's going on with this. Now, here's another archaeological find that just happened in this last week. Everything is being revealed a huge pyramidal complex in Guatemala. They're calling this the Lost Kingdom, dating back before the time of Jesus. Let's read about this particular archaeological find. There's some pictures in here as well. An ancient Mayan kingdom from 2,000 years ago was discovered, buried in northern Guatemala. Archaeologists uncovered nearly a thousand ancient Mayan settlements in the Mirador Calakmul Karst Basin and surrounding ridge, 417 cities dating back between 1000 BC and 100 AD. So they did some remote sensing and they found ball courts. They found all kinds of weird stuff. 30 ball courts. Now, were these really ball courts? Would these people spend this kind of labor to build a ball court? I don't know. This is what they're being called in modern times. But what if there was another purpose to these ball courts? They were 30 to 65 feet in length, composed of two parallel structures, often in a north-south axis. Makes you wonder if these things weren't used maybe for looking at the stars instead of throwing a ball through a hoop. They had a bunch of reservoirs and dams to re-divert water, apparently. And now this whole thing is covered in jungle. Here's some of the pictures here. Here's some people standing on top of some of these pyramids covered in trees. And then you go down here and they actually show it from the air using some kind of technology, radar technology. Look at this. Here's the bigger pyramid there covered up and some of these other ball courts they're called 65 something ball courts long so here's what's going on in guatemala now understand that a lot of these discoveries they're not going to tell us all the details of it they're going to cover a lot of this up they don't want people to know the details of what they're discovering that could reinforce some of the theories that we have on this channel and other people have about the history of this world. They're going to give you their version of history.
So, weird times, you guys. Let's go into the chat here. That was pretty much all I had for you guys today. As we go into the weekend, glad it's Friday. We will be back probably Monday, Monday or Tuesday. But let's see what you guys are up to in the chat here. They found a sphinx in the Far East, says Solemn Peace. All right. Greetings, everybody. Freemasonics with Sony and cover up. Likely, absolutely. All right. Anything you guys want to talk about today before we pop off here? I thought Enoch was Lord Inki, Loki, Son, Thoth. Well, there are two Enochs in the Bible. A good Enoch and a bad Enoch. One from Cain's line and one from Seth's line. There are chambers in the Sphinx. Yeah, it's really cold. It's like a deep freeze out here, you guys. There's like two or three inches of snow on the ground here. Do I miss Connecticut? <laughs> Not really. It was really cold there. A lot colder than it is here. Think about Connecticut. As soon as you get into the winters... The snow and ice kind of stays on the ground for months. Whereas here in Arkansas, they're already saying that the forecast is going to be in the 60s uh, neck in like five days. So all the snow is going to melt and it'll be actually warm. And so it gets broken up a lot more the further south you go. There were a lot of cool things about Connecticut, but Connecticut was just... Uh, but way too expensive too as well. And the living conditions there are not that great for what you pay in rent. A lot of really old buildings with mold and nothing ever really dries out. And so health wise, you don't feel as healthy. Um, so that's what's kind of going on in Connecticut. But also the people there are a little bit uh, edgy, I'll say. People here are a lot nicer. More my speed. My personality out here. Decode the movie The Humanity Report. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, stay warm everybody. It's very, uh, well, it's rocky here, too, where I'm at in uh, Arkansas. It's pretty rocky, but it's it's a little bit flatter, and it's kind of broken up by a lot of trees and stuff. It's just, to me, it's just a little bit prettier. You know, Connecticut's beautiful, too, but then you got, like, New York, like, right there. And so you get you feel that. You see a lot of New York drivers, a lot of... You know, inconsiderate drivers. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just telling you guys the truth. It's kind of dirty. I mean, there is a lot to do for people that like to do stuff. But for if you're a homebody, you definitely feel like a dark energy there. A lot of people are consumed with money. There's the haves and have-nots. Believe it or not, you're going to laugh. But I felt more... I don't want to call it a racist vibe because it was more like an economic vibe. Like if you're not wearing the right clothes and you're not don't have the right job and live in the right house, you're kind of treated differently there. And I, I just don't feel that out here in Arkansas. Everybody is just really, really nice. Like everybody. Even people that you can tell might not necessarily like you still help you. It's unbelievable. I'm just saying people that maybe, you know, Almost to a fault because there are a lot of 
bad, bad people out there that take advantage of nice people. It's very sad. And there are crimes committed where people are asking for help to get their car fixed or something. And then they get, and then the person gets tricked into a crime. Okay. Well, everybody out here, 100% will help you if your car is broken down. They, I mean, I've had my car broken down a couple times and people literally stop and ask you if you need help. So just letting you know that that's just the truth of it. I've lived in a lot of places, you guys. Um, and I've seen the people and been around them and interacted with people. So, so nature nurture says she can attest to that. She grew up in Greenwich and Gre Greenwich is a lot of money in Greenwich and it's closer to New York. You get a lot of New York people that live in Greenwich and it's gotten worse even over the three or four years that I lived there. Uh, the rents went through the roof. Interestingly, during the pandemic, huge growth mode, all the people from New York left or a lot of them left. New York City to move out into the suburbs and of course uh, that have directly affected the rents and the situation in the surrounding areas so it was very it felt like the everything was closing in around you so all right what else is going on in here Thanks for sticking around and hanging out, you guys. We don't really hang out enough, do we? A few minutes usually after I present, but uh, sometimes it's nice to just hang out, isn't it? All right. Probably could use a look at for clues for the coming cat pandemic. Yeah, somebody sent me a picture of that uh, Joe Biden sent out of a cat staring up at a Christmas tree. I was like, well, that's creepy. Maybe a foreshadowing of things to come. Who knows? I think it was a gray cat. Do you guys see that tweet? Um, Many are relocating Missouri, Arkansas, and bringing in West Mentality's belief. I don't think the people out here are going to let that happen. You guys, it was really hard. You can't even rent a place out here. There's nowhere to rent. I got blessed. Um, it was a fluke. I basically, uh, you know, could not. I was on waiting lists for like two or three months to move out here. There was nowhere to rent out here. Now, people might be buying land out here, but guess what? There's an unspoken rule out here that they're not going to let that happen. People here have been here for hundreds of years, and they will lovely, love you as the Lord says to love you, but they also aren't going to put up with any BS. And so, these people can come and try to change stuff, but guess what? Uh... Some things are going to start happening to you if you start to change things. Okay? That's all I can say. And the authorities are going to back that. So, they can try, but it's not going to happen. Now, having said that, there are a lot of people deceived by Trump out here, and it breaks my heart. Because they're really good people, but they buy the lie. Because they're not informed about all the stuff that we're talking about. They don't understand the right-left paradigm. And so, um, you know, that's what's going on out here. But I'd rather have that than dealing with other politics in other states. And dealing with that kind of dysfunction. So, yeah. So, apparently the rental situation out here is there's a lot of fishing and hunting and camping. And there are some attractions out here, like Branson, Missouri is a huge attraction. So apparently the people that rent out their properties do so on like Airbnb and places like that. So you can rent stuff, but it's a lot more expensive because you're renting it by the day or by the week. But in terms of long-term rentals, there aren't hardly any out here, almost none. So that kind of keeps stuff in check, I guess you can say. Which I, I believe is a good thing. Like I said, I got blessed. I have a, a rental here I pay $750 a month for for Max and I. 
It was it's brand new. It was built two years ago. It's nice. Everything works on it. It's not a slum, and uh, we're comfortable here. And I'm paying about half of what I would be paying in Connecticut for the same thing for rent. So now some of the drawbacks are if you're in the workforce trying to work an hourly wage, you're not going to get paid very much out here. It's just the way it is. I mean, unless you have some kind of, unless you're like a professional, you have some kind of college degree or credential, you could get a job at one of the colleges or stuff like that. Um, so it's hard to make a living. But if you're a transplant and you kind of cash out your previous life and come here, you can have a really great life because things are inexpensive here. Groceries are inexpensive. Gas is inexpensive. I think gas is down back down to two eighty a gallon or something like that. It's really cheap now. Back to where it was. So, what else is going on in here? Much love, Marion. Tiny homes are taking off. Yes, they are. And this is where I think the federal government's going to step in and put a bunch of restrictions on land. I don't know how they're going to do it. It's probably going to be through, um, they're going to say climate change. Here we are. We're supposed to be in global warming, right? <laughs> And uh, here we are with the Siberian vortex. <laughs> record temperatures. Record low temperatures. Gas, 245 a gallon. It's like half of what you pay in California. It's unbelievable. Awesome. So. Yeah, they will not pay hourly workers what they're worth. I was looking at some crazy statistic about building costs and California has their building costs are through the roof literally pun intended like it's double what you'd pay in building costs to build the same structure out here in Arkansas and it's mostly because of the labor but it's also just inflated it's just inflated so All right. Two ninety nine in Illinois. That's good for you guys. Cool. Two ninety nine a gallon. They were planning on putting meters on everyone's private wells. You know, I thought about digging a well and I looked into it. And apparently, those wells run on electricity. So to get you have to have a pump to get the water out of the ground. So I kind of opted against it. Just because the electricity bills out here are so cheap and I did have water supply at my cabin and so I kind of opted against it and the water is like 50 bucks a month or something. Uh, but, you know, how long is that water source going to be around? Fortunately, in Arkansas, it rains enough to where if you collected rainwater in some kind of bin, then you could live off of that put it through like a filter or whatever maybe put sand in the bottom i don't know how they filter water but you could essentially live off of collected rainwater in arkansas because it rains almost every single week i don't think i've gone more than a week to two weeks without rain here and that's different for me because growing up in california we would go six months without a drop of rain so yeah, 50 bucks a month for water in Arkansas. Everything's cheaper out here, you guys. My total utilities for where I'm renting right now is like, let's see, $250 a month for all my utilities, electricity, internet. Um, what else is there? Yeah. You pay 50 bucks a quarter. That's not cheap. Well, yeah, I mean, it might not be cheap compared to these. I mean, we're talking about economies across the U.S. Obviously, there are other places with much cheaper water, but then there are places that are a lot more expensive. I have a friend that fills up his hot tub and it costs him $200 a month in water in California. So, you know, different economies. I think $50 a month for water is fair. 
cheaper than putting an electric pump on a well because it's going to cost me about that much in electricity to get the water out of the ground so for now it works you're in Connecticut well Connecticut probably gets even more rain than Arkansas or about probably about the same 293 a gallon for Bell Indian Reservoir. Maine is very expensive. Yeah, it should be free for water app opposite, you know, absolutely. I guess they have to charge something to keep the infrastructure up because obviously the water lines come in the house. But what I don't agree with is them, you know, uh, making it illegal to collect rainwater. That's crazy. That's tyranny. There are a lot of states where they do that. And in some states where they do that, it doesn't make any sense. These are states that get a lot of water, but yet they make it illegal to collect rainwater. They say it's part of a watershed that they somehow own. So, Oregon, the well water is very clean and pure. Very cool. I had a chance to analyze the old Avatar movie. Yeah, we looked at that some time ago. The tree was, I think, what we kind of focused on. That huge tree. Electricity delivery charges. Now, Chick Eastwater, you guys are paying a lot. I know this for a fact. In heating oil. Gosh. Heating oil in Connecticut was approaching six to eight hundred dollars a month if you're not careful that's highway robbery to stay warm in the winter that's crazy if you could confirm that that would be great for everyone to see so you know yeah your water bill might be cheaper by 25 dollars or but your home heating oil and your electric bill is going to be way more expensive That, and that was pretty much what priced me out of the rental market. It's crazy. Like, one thing I notice on the East Coast is there's a lot of controlled situations. I don't know what you call it. You want to call it uh, the mob. There are groups of people with a lot of power that control certain industries and do very unfair things to people. Like the home heating oil. Literally, when you go to look for a rental in Connecticut, they kind of trick you. Like, they're like, oh... We have home heating oil. They don't really say whether they have it or not. They kind of do, but what they don't tell you is how much that's going to cost you per month. So basically what you're dealing with is, you know, your electric bill could either be through the roof or your home heating bill could be th through the roof. Energy costs in Connecticut are very, very, very high for some reason. I don't know why that is. It doesn't have to be. Like, I, like I've told you guys before, I've run my air conditioner at a comfortable level all through the summer here in, in Arkansas. And my electric bill never went over $120 a month. So, why is why if you did the same thing in Connecticut, would it cost you $300 a month in electricity? That doesn't make any sense to me. Same thing for Texas. I noticed Texas has really high energy costs too when it comes to electricity. And I don't know why that is. But these are all things you should consider when you're planning on where you want to live because it could make or break you. You don't want to be in a situation where you're freezing in the, in the winter or, you know, boiling in the summer. You want to be comfortable. Peripheral series. Yeah, we decoded that one already. There's a couple decodes on peripheral. You just got to look back on the channel here. Snowball's electricity is 150. Now, you probably, what do you have? Like, a, a, do you have a studio snowball? I can't remember what you told me. Or a one or two bedroom? If you're trying to heat or cool a two or three bedroom house, your costs go up very, very quickly. For energy 
And it's going to get worse because they've already told us it's going to get worse because they're trying to blame us for global warming, right? So how do they incentivize you against that? They make it expensive so that you don't use as much. Electricity is cheap in Washington State, says Bill, because the dams produce a lot. Well, I don't know if you heard, Bill, but they are talking about removing all those dams, aren't they? Correct me if I'm wrong. Four bedrooms, says Snowball. Okay, that's still pretty good. Uh, redeems on equal billing there. Why am I not addressing the important questions here? Uh, I think I kind of am, Hilda. What's your question? Gosh, why do people get so nippy? Just be nice. Why can't people just be nice? Just state your question. $150 three-bedroom house about four months ago. Uh, out of the year here, 50 to $69 the rest of the year. Hmm. Okay. What is your question, Hilda, that we're not addressing here? So I can address your question. It's the sewer bill that's expensive, not so much the water bill. Yeah, sewer can get expensive. If I ever had a black cat, I would name it Snowball. Okay, Marvel Egyptian Superhero Series. Hmm. Steven has a black cat named Snowball. That's pretty funny. Just be nice, right? It's pretty simple. I try to be nice to everybody. But then, you know, people come at us. And then when I, you know, rebuke them, they're like, why are you being so mean? Uh, read your first comment. <laughs> so, what else do you guys want to talk about? The horse hair, the Trump hair. Kind of, right? And a DOD named Star. Maybe dog? Oh, a dog named Star. She has a black eye. Oh, that's cute. Did anybody see? Yeah, the whole... You know what's funny is... Joe Biden misspoke and he called him Balensky and then he corrected himself. Well, that sounds like Balenciaga, right? <laughs> right? Isn't that crazy? He like, it was a Freudian slip. He said Balensky and then he corrected himself. I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but I thought that was weird. Yeah, the nerve, right? the nerve and the the censorship is obvious because nobody thinks that what happened the other day with him is a good idea nobody but yet what do you see on social media you don't see people speaking out against it because it's all been suppressed and silenced it's being called hate speech if you disagree with it it's unbelievable so, uh, what do we do at this point? Well, I don't want to see any of us get knocked off of social media. So, we do what we can, but we have to be very wise, don't we? Because what they want is us to step in their trap so they can wipe us off social media. So, they can basically rebuild social media in their image. That's what they want us to do. So, don't fall for the traps, you guys. Don't fall for it. All right. I guess we answered Hilda's questions because she disappeared. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Nature Nurture. I appreciate doing these decodes for you guys. Not sure what I'm going to work on next, but I'm going to give you guys the weekend to kind of relax. A lot of you have family and stuff over. I don't want you sitting watching the, my videos while uh, while you should be spending time with your families. Um, so we'll be back like Monday, you know, after Christmas. And uh, if you guys have any recommendations or things you want me to look at. Just put them in the comment section. I do try to read through all the comments under the video because that's something I definitely do. Even though I don't get to all your emails and stuff, I will read the comments. So put any recommendations or suggestions. I know we have not looked at Willow yet. I just can't bring myself to do it. It just looks so lame, you guys. So I don't know if I'm going to look at Willow even though we've uncovered so much of the Willow baldness aspect the willow tree and artemis and all of that i mean if you have a particular scene you want me to look at or a particular episode that you think has a lot of symbolism in it just let me know let me know that and maybe i'll look at that episode but i'm not into the fantasy stuff it's just hard for me to watch it's just doesn't keep my attention really also have not looked at Pinocchio. I, again, it's one of those things. I don't know. Sometimes I just hit a wall and I just can't bring myself to watch certain movies. Um, but if there's something inside the movie Pinocchio that you want me to, that you know for a fact, screenshot it, send it to me. That will definitely help me out. Or tell me timestamps of things that you noticed. And then I'll put together a decode for stuff like that. There's a new Barbie movie. Oh, that's interesting. Willow is just trash, just trash. <laughs> okay, so see, there's. I usually get a gut feeling about some of this stuff. And I'm like, I'm not going to even subject myself to that. I guess the same guy from the original Willow, he's a small person, is actually in the new Willow TV series. Have I done Under the Dome? Yes, we did that a long time ago, Terry. So I think you can search the channel and probably find Under the Dome on this channel. Barbie 2001 Space Odyssey. Let's see. Okay. Heidi's in a cabin. Um... Snow melt snowman transitions into a snow woman. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Huh. I'm just reading your guys' comments. Have we seen Nope? Yes, Chick Eastwater. We decoded that one, so you can find that on the channel here. Most of the major films with with a lot of symbolism we've covered. I, I don't typically try to skip over films. Although, I have not decoded the new Thor movie either. So I just... I don't know. The, okay, I'll be honest with you. There's about a 25% incentive for me to watch a film based on my personal entertainment value. I'll admit that to you. I'm a human being. I can't watch romantic comedies, for instance. Unless it's like Lance Corona, obviously. I'm going to watch that, right? If it's overt symbolism, I will watch a romantic comedy. But I won't do it unless there's some overt symbolism. Because I'm a human being. I'm not going to trudge through just cringeworthy. I did make myself watch Black Adam. It was a horrible film. It's basically The Rock floating around like some kind of god. You know. And he didn't even walk on the ground. He just floated around. <laughs> I was like, who watches this stuff? <laughs> but, you know. I mean, this is a labor. It is a labor of love. And I do watch a lot of stuff I don't like to watch. But there are certain things I just won't watch. There's a new movie uh, with Brad Pitt in it called Babylon. It's probably a film I should decode. But it's a comedy. 
And I just, I don't like comedies. So now the powers that be are going to go out and make all their movies comedies and put their symbolism in it, knowing that I'm not going to decode it, right? <laughs> so what are we up to? 60, almost 70 billion dollars we've sent that country. And they've got Yahtzees showing up to Gizreel. Uh, you guys, it's getting really bad. And the mainstream media really isn't talking about it. You got to go to like Odyssey and, uh, you know, subscribe to some of the Russian channels, Russian news channels to get the full picture of what's really going on. But, uh, you know, I had my suspicions about the connection between the Yahtzee and the, uh, the Grizz Reel. I've had my suspicions about that. And apparently now there are some weird bromance between the two. It's bizarre. Never seen anything like it. But, you know, it's crazy. All right. Yeah, Shauna, that's what I watch on Odyssey to get the other side. Now, not that I think that Putin is a good guy. I think this is one big mass sacrifice ritual to get rid of a bunch of good people, a bunch of Christians, to make you pick a side and then you go and you fight and you die and you're gone. All under the banner of patriotism. It's just like that Trump card we looked at, carrying the, the, the flag of sacrifice, the red flag and everybody dies. And then there's a new beginning. So. All right. Now, yeah, they've been talking all about these nukes. Now, if you didn't get to check out yesterday's show, we were talking all about... Our predictions for 2023 now I, I want to clarify that I don't want you to think that we're trying to predict the future that's not what we're doing we're using the past information to try to give our best guess about what the future holds and I understand I could be completely wrong about some of what we discussed yesterday so I don't want people to think oh he's trying to predict the future no we're just giving our best guess of what the they have in store for us okay so that's what we were doing there and part of that was looking at the nuclear threat They're, they've been talking so much about it that I think it's probably gonna happen and one thing we've seen progress over 2022 was the connection between the US and the Ukraine and we're not hiding it anymore it's essentially now a proxy war against Russia we are at war with Russia that's what's happening right now okay and if you're in denial about that you need to go back and Look at the progression of how in the beginning we wouldn't send any anything that was um, for offense. And now everything that we're sending is for offense. Because it was just defensive stuff. And now it's offensive stuff. So things are escalating. And so they'll use that to maybe justify the deployment of some kind of nuclear weapon where a lot of people are going to die. That is my best guess for the nuclear aspect of 2023. Yes, poking the bear. Now, will that affect our lives directly? Probably not. But something is coming. Something is coming, you guys. They've been talking too much about it. All right. All right, well, I guess we'll pop off here, you guys. I just wanted to spend a little time with you today before we went into the weekend. Hopefully I answered all your questions. Um, we didn't have to block anybody today, so that's a good thing. <laughs> all right, you guys, have a great weekend. Take care and be safe.